Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well as always. And uh, today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and uh, talk about uh, a gig that I went to over on the weekend. Uh, it's my first gig post, we're not really out of it, are we? But sort of post COVID time where you can't even go anywhere, right? And you can actually go to a gig. Uh, this is my first gig since uh, I think it was Slipknot back in 2019. And uh, yeah, it was Bring Me The Horizon, obviously, because you clicked on the video, you know what it is. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd talk about it a little bit. I've got a couple of little clips as well that I uh, I, I took during the show on, on my iPhone. They're not the best, but for any Bring Me fans out there that like like me, um, you just want to, you know, hear a little bit about it and maybe see some of it. It's, uh, it's all going to be in this video for you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, so Bring Me The Horizon, huge band for me. I know they're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but for me that I've listened to them for absolute years now, I've always enjoyed what they've done on their albums. I think they're a great set of musicians. I think they're extremely creative. Um, and they've, it's interesting. They've always been at the forefront of a genre, uh, that they've never really wanted to be part of, if that makes sense. They're always sort of like one step ahead of the trend. And then what happens is when they put out something that's a progression for them, everybody sort of follows suit, I think. Um, not everybody, everybody's got their own thing going on, but I think that a lot of people kind of would love to have a lot of things that they do. So then they'll put an album out with, with similar sort of stuff like Mick Gordon alarms and stuff from like the post human thing on the last record. And then, uh, and then bring me by that point of, I've like moved on to the next thing. And then the band sort of follow suit. I think they're quite, uh, influential and, and certainly on, uh, my, my guitar playing as well as a guitar player. Uh, Lee Malia obviously is, uh, is one of my favorite guitar players, which is why I got this thing. If you want to see a, an in-depth review on this guitar, uh, there's a, there's a me and my guitars video on here where I, I play this thing for you and, uh, I chat a little bit about it, why I bought it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that's all on there. I'll try and remember to leave a card at the top for you if you want to go and check that out. Uh, so yeah, so the gig was last Friday and we drove all the way out to Sheffield for this one. There was no, uh, date that was close to home for us this time. And the man going to Sheffield and oh my God, I kind of knew what was coming because when I went and bought my camper, I kind of had to go that way to buy that. I don't know if anybody in the UK has tried doing cross country. You want to go north and south, just hop on the motorway up and down. No problem. Cross country, different story altogether. It's absolutely nuts. Like you're going through little towns, um, the moors, right? In the middle of nowhere. And then you go through more little towns with traffic lights and yeah, more moors, right? And then you'll come out of that and then you'll hit another little town. It's just absolutely crazy. Before you know it, you've hit the city. It, it, it's really strange how it kind of creeps up on you, but it's, it's a, it's a heck of a, of a journey. Um, so there was that, that took us about two and a half hours to get there, checked into the hotel, went on over and we just thought, oh, well, the stadium's right there. We'll just, um, get some food, chill out. It was me and a couple of friends who went and my other half. And, uh, we didn't realize that the queuing was going to take forever and people were queuing to get in right up until Bring Me came on. There were two support acts. You had uh, Nova Twins and, um, God, what's the name of that band? You, me, it's six. Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I didn't really even know who they were until the day. I don't think. And I know that's me being ignorant. Um, but yeah, we, we got in about, we caught the last two songs of you and me and six's set, which we, I wasn't bothered about particularly cause it was there for Bring Me. But for instance, there was someone in the group who wanted to see that band, right? And we were queuing and the queues just went up and down the car park, like up and they would loop back down loads of different lines. Then you got there, then you were doing like a, a strip search practically. And then you got to the door itself and you go to check in with the tickets and you had to have apparently um, COVID passes to get in, NHS passes, right? Just to show that you've been vaccinated. That's, that's a whole shit storm on its own. I'm not going to go into that but I got it done uh because I've been double vaccinated I had the little thing we were queuing in the line all right and I got my thing up and it's a little um code reader that they just scan on the their system as well as your ticket and uh <laughs> I looked at it and it said <laughs> expires on the 23rd of September <laughs> and this was the 24th <laughs> 
So we've queued for all that time and we're literally about to go. And I just look in the top corner. My other half's one's in date. She's, hers was lasting way into October and my one was expired. So I was like, great. Am I not going to be able to get in? I've queued for all this time. The band's going to be on in like 30 minutes because you could hear the sets rumbling and we knew the time that they were coming on. And um, yeah, <laughs> so fortunately we got to the door and I kind of coyly had it in my hand like, please don't scan this. And they didn't. All that hassle and they didn't even bother to scan the thing. So there was no problem there getting in. Uh, we were standing. All our friends were seated. So we went on down, stood. And yeah, um, caught the end of the... Uh, the 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 Yumi and Six set yeah uh, whatever that that was that was good it's good exposure for them um, but they've been going for a while now I didn't realize um, that I, I like what I like when it comes to music okay and I'm, I'm not that great when it comes to uh, other bands and stuff and uh, yeah so so bring me like I said was it was a huge band for me to see after all this time and I've kind of been ticking off at this point in in my life like all the bands that I've been listening to for years in one hit, like I had Bullet My Valentine, Metallica, Slipknot, Behemoth, like all in a row. And the next one that's come along has been Bring Me. So those are like my, my big major bands that I've been ticking off. And yeah, the set was great. The set was absolutely perfect. They played all the songs that I, I wanted to hear. They played Post Human in its entirety, apart from the last song on that album, I think, which was the uh, the Evanescence Amy Lee thing, right? Um, she, she guest vocaled on that. And uh, yeah, they, they, they just didn't pull any punches. They came out, they went straight into teardrops, went straight into it, and the set just really didn't let up. The sound was incredible. And Lee's guitar tone, oh my God. Lee's quite a, um, a tone junkie anyway, and he's quite a purist. He likes his um, JCM 800 Marshalls, right? And, and uh, his Klon pedals and stuff like that, really rare boutique things that he puts in front of it. And... Oh man, his tone was monstrous. It was, in fact, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna say now and go on record that it's one of the best live guitar tones I've ever heard. And because it was unique, it was not your typical metalcore, you know, PV6505 tube screamer in the front, or at that point, you know, in, in a concert. It, I don't think he's running everything from like a camper backstage and stuff. I'm pretty sure he's, he still uses like real heads and stuff like that. Um, and it was monstrous. Plus he has the 80 gauge on the bottom, right? Which is a bass string. I don't know if anybody knew about that. The reason why he gets away with tuning so low on such a short scale guitar for, for the most part, like his Gibsons, he just sticks an 80 gauge on the bottom. He has to route out the back, right? And, and slap a bass string on the bottom. So it was all the tone riffs like, um, happy song and mantra, those big single note riffs, which I'm all about anyway, going back to like, Black Sabbaths and stuff like that. It, it's all about the single note riff for me. Just those big single note riffs on the bottom string. It just cut through. And there's a heck of a lot going on with Bring Me, right? You've got Jordan who's at the back with all his um, tacky stuff, right? And, and custom percussion in a way. Um, plus you've got the backing tracks. Yeah, then you've got a drummer, bassist, vocals, backing vocals. There's a lot to cut through. A hell of a lot. And I don't know if you guys know, but um, guitars and and synths and stuff like that aren't really happy bedmates. You've got to get it just right in order for everything to sit in the mix well and, and cut through. And Lee's guitar was just like, bang, like in your face. It was great. Um, and it was really cool for me to see him playing this because I love this and I love Lee, right? I'm, I'm a huge uh, Lee Malia fan, right? And it was just so cool to see him pl like jamming away on the single note riffs on this thing because it, it looked cool, it looks the part, and it sounds great as well. That pickup in the back, like I said, I'll go into depth. I go into depth on my my video on this on this guitar, um, but that pickup will rip your face off. It's a really hot Gibson pickup, right? Um, so yeah, so it, it was it was great. It, it, the sound was absolutely perfect. And just getting to see some of these songs that I've been listening to for, for absolutely ever. And I've been watch I've watched them like in concerts on the TV and stuff like that. You know, always wanted to go and see them because it's theatricality. It, it's a big, um, it's, it, the show is a big production. If you like, they've got loads going on with the lighting and people coming on and off stage. And, you know, it's not just, they just turn up, play their instruments and get off stage, you know, and show me a couple of circle pits and that's it done. Yeah, it's it. The whole thing is is very produced, and it, it's it's a lot to take in. As a matter of fact, because we were down in the thick of it, 
I would like to see them again, but stand at the back or maybe get seated just to take in the whole thing. Because when, when you're up close at a concert, the sound isn't as perfect anyway because you're like right in front of the PA and it's going right over your head. The sound was good, don't get me wrong. Loud, really loud, right? Um, but the further back you are and you can see more maybe and, and take everything in, I, w- I would really like to do that as well. But it was really cool to just be up there and, you know, in the thick of it and in the crowd and the atmosphere and stuff like that. So highlights of the gig for me, uh, definitely the breakdown in House of Wolves. I think I've got that on a little clip right here that I'm going to play for you. Uh, that breakdown is is really cool and everyone was pushing back in the crowd. And when, when he says push it back, you've just got absolutely no chance at all. Everyone's just like pushing back pit opens yeah it's absolutely mental um so that was definitely a highlight for me uh the end of drown i don't know if you guys know that song but right at the end there's some really nice chords that lee plays really 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 nice chords and uh, i'm not rigged up to play and show you right now but maybe i'll do a cover of that at some point those chords are just so pretty right and just to hear that at the end of that that was really cool i've always enjoyed that part of the song uh parasite eve Breakdown, immense. Ludens, breakdown, really good fun. Dear Diary, which is the uh, the shredder off the new album, was really cool on quite a few levels because Lee was jet rocking a Jackson Randy Rhodes with a Floyd on it. Big black Jackson, a little bit like mine, but not seven string and no inverted headstock. But he was ro- rocking this uh, Floyd, Floyd Rose loaded uh, Jackson Randy Rhodes, which I'd never seen him play before. Um, and that song was a massive kick in the teeth. It was an absolute shred fest. It's got the guitar solo and the big heavy riffs. And right at the end, they prolong the breakdown. It's almost like they transposed the guitars down, like pitch shifted them lower. And they played like a really heavy version of the riff that I didn't catch because I wasn't expecting that part. It was like an ad lib, an extra thing that they've thrown in. And Ollie was going for it with his low gut rolls and stuff like that. So that, that was really fun as well. And yeah, Ollie was uh, screaming right the way through the set as well, which was really cool. Uh, it, it, a lot of bands at this point have been doing it for a long time. They're not going to name any names, but they'll sing their way through the set. They'll either sing their way through the set or they'll do that for the majority of the time for the audience participation, which is okay. But then they'll play it safe. Ollie was just going for it. He was doing all his highs, his lows, you know, and he was, he, he was just absolutely on form. And the humor as well. Uh, was was really funny in there as well that he'd like he'd throw in like you know very northern based humor he'd say stuff like um right if you don't push this back now and if you don't get in that circle pit then you're a knobhead you know just stuff like that rather than the macho kind of like show me a circle pit mother truckers kind of thing you know it, it was very um it, it's not that sort of um take yourself too seriously gig yeah and it was nice because wh- when they played follow you they played that as like a little acoustic thing. And they brought a Brad Graham piano on stage and uh, Jordan played piano and uh, uh, Lee was on an acoustic guitar. And obviously everyone's getting the lighters out for that sort of thing. But it was cool because it wasn't like this pretentious thing where like, oh, this is a really um, touchy-feely song and we, we hope it touches you guys. Like it was humor right the way through it because a lot of the times when bands go unplugged, that sort of thing happens. There's this pretentious seriousness that comes with it, I found. Um, but the, the the humor was there. You know, Ollie was sort of like talking to people. Someone was trying to get on their uh, shoulders because he wanted everybody to get on the shoulders. And he's going, oh, what's the matter with you? Have you got COVID? You know, that just silly sort of humor that kept it funny um, and lighthearted. Yeah, it was a good time. The other songs that stand out for me, uh, Kingslayer, that thing was a rave, absolute massive rave because they have baby metal coming over on the PA and that's so sort of like synth heavy um but the guitars are an absolute monster on that as well all the lights like, of the low riff and it was just really heavy you know um so that that song absolutely kicked off the crowd where the crowd was not stood still for one moment through the entire set it just the energy was huge so high points of the set for me again breakdown in house of wolves yeah seeing them play drown live Dear Diary, because it was heavy. Um, Shadow Moses, of course. Uh, the heavy riffs going on there. I guess those were sort of the highlights for me. Low point of the gig. Um, nothing to do with the band. Nothing to do with the queuing. That's all comes... Queuing comes part and parcel of it. When they went into Teardrop... Is it Teardrops or Teardrop? One of them's a Massive Attack song, so either one is right. 
<laughs> one of them is right. I think I think it's teardrop, right? Um, some guy came over, and everyone's having a good time, and oh my god, it's the band, and you know, you're on a high at that point, and you're singing and screaming your lungs out, and uh, I had a sore throat by the second song, right, or, or by the third song, House of Wolves, because I was just yelling at the top of my voice, right, and I was like, I need to pace myself now because I'm gonna have no voice at the end, right. And um, what happened was uh, he was stood there and some guy just came over. He's sort of like coming through the crowd. He had half a pint in his hand, right, that he bought at the venue. He was looking for somewhere to put it down. And he looked at me. Yeah, yeah. He just went and put it down in front of me. I just stared at him. I just didn't know what to say. Like, really, you're going to put that there? That is going to get knocked over in a matter of seconds. Yeah, like with the crowd, like jumping around and stuff like that. And it's going to go all over me. I just stared at him and he just went and walked off. And lo and behold, as soon as he walked off, somebody moved back, pint all over me. So I guess that's sort of like the low point of the gig for me. Just that kind of, man, at least I, I get people throw their stuff on the floor and stuff. It's not like you're going to go outside and go to the bin and put it down, are you? I, I get that. But it's like at least neck the rest of it and then get rid of it, you know? And it's the fact that it went all over me. So I guess that was like the, the low point just... Him being just hard faced about it and just like, yeah, it's gonna go all over you. Deal with it. Um, fortunately, I didn't see him again for the rest of the gig, so I was able to sort of move on. But yeah, I got my feet got caked in uh, in uh, pint basically. So obviously, another high point for me was uh, Lee, just watching Lee doing his thing. I've mentioned this a couple of times now, but you know, when you've watched a band and you've listened to them for so long, and then you finally get to see them. Yeah, it's it's absolutely huge. It's immense, you know. And 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 the fact that Lee was playing this, he swapped guitars out quite a bit in the set. Like I said, he had that Jackson Randy Rhodes for one song. He had a couple of other misc sort of things. He's got a signature guitar with a really, uh, uh, maybe a not so well known uh, guitar company as well. Um, but he was still playing his Epiphones amongst some some other stuff, which I couldn't quite make out what it was. Um, but. Yeah, just seeing him play this, it was it was just huge for me. And, and like I said, being in the atmosphere, not being sat all the way back, being rel- relatively close to the guys, getting to watch them, you know, watching them have a good time doing it. Again, a lot of bands at this point who've come from a very heavy music background and they've kind of developed their sound and I know they've dipped their toe back in the water of playing heavy again. They'll just do a set list of all the new stuff and and the tame stuff at that. And granted, the, there was Follow You in there, there was Madison, you know, there was those songs. But they also brought it with like Shadow Moses, House of Wolves, Dear Diary, uh, they, they uh, Obey, which was a really heavy one from the new album as well. And it, live, that was that was cool. It's a lot of bands kind of shy away. And like I said, the singer will just sing his way through it. And it's almost like they're kind of like ashamed of where they come from. I'm not too sure. I, I, but... You know, they won. They they just did it. They just didn't hold back. All the screams were there. All the singing was there. Uh, all the uh, circle pits, yeah, and and the, the craziness that you'd expect from a heavy show. It was all there. So there wasn't one thing about that gig that let me down. Because sometimes you go to a gig, a band that you've liked for ages and you've never seen them before, and you'll go and they'll let you down. I haven't really had that myself, uh, but I know a few people have. And it sucks. It's a little bit like the whole don't meet don't meet your heroes thing or your idols. Sometimes you go and meet your favorite guitar player and it's it's just really awkward and uh, you know, I mean, they meet how many people in a day and they want to get away from people sometimes. But even at a paid meet and greet, if they're not sort of um into it, you can tell and they're just like, Yeah, okay, sign your thing, move on, you know. Uh, but this wasn't like that. You know, and, and even with the gigs, you know, sometimes you can go and see them. And it, it's just not what you thought. These guys obviously have been like a spring along with many other bands through this whole period of, of COVID, right? Everyone's been like a spring wanting to, like it's been pushed down. And now that they're able to get on stage and do their thing again, it's like, toof, explode, right? And they, they certainly did it. It, it was, there, was no, um, there was no holding back. The energy was there. And uh yeah, it, it was it was certainly a, a huge gig for me that I'll never forget. And also, I'm going to say it now, it's probably one of my favorite gigs I've ever been to, if not my favorite. And I know I've seen both my Valentine, Metallica, all these other bands and stuff that are maybe a little bit bigger for me. But on a production level, 
Yeah. It was just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a spectacle. Is that right? Yeah. Something like that to, to observe, you know, with the light in and the, the craziness going on. And in Parasite Eve, they had these guys come in and like coveralls for the breakdown and this like disinfectant spray because the whole thing's about COVID, right? And um, Ollie just goes, right, you all need to be cleansed now. These guys just came on stage and just started like spraying us with what looked like some sort of, I don't know, like spray that you'd get rid of like parasites and insects with, right? Just stuff like that is just really cool. Um, like I said, I'm going back over myself here and I'm rambling on. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. But yeah, just hearing the guitar tones and Lee's guitars and watching him do his thing. That was the main thing for me. Obviously, listening to Wally screaming his lungs out was fun as well because I really enjoy aggressive vocals. But the highlight was just seeing Lee do his thing, watching this guitar get played in a, in a massive arena. Um, and yeah, and, and hearing Lee's guitar tone properly you know, live, not, not through a, you know, a, a desk recording of a live concert or a, on a studio track. Hearing those low single note riffs, like, like coming right at you. Yeah. That sort of thing. I, I absolutely love it. And I love guitar tones. And I love good guitar tones. And the fact that his guitar tone was just monstrous was yeah. Awesome. Because I'm all sort of fired up and inspired by this whole thing. I'm working on uh, maybe a, a bring me cover next. I've just been on my camper. I've got the Lee Malia uh, camp pack. So all his tones are on there. So I've just been making a little bank for myself with um, some of his tones and stuff. So I'm going to have a play with that. I'm going to pick a song and hopefully knock a uh, uh, Bring Me cover out for you guys this week. And yeah, I'm going to play some of the uh, the footage for you now that I caught. It's not the best. A lot of it's me shaking because people are pushing around, right? So it's a little bit shaky. It's not the best, but it's just to give you an idea. You know, the sound's obviously not going to be the same either. It's going to sound super thin, but... You know, I just thought I'd share it with you guys if you're interested and have a look at that. So I'm going to roll that now. Got some footage there of Lee rocking that Jackson. Um, I've got some footage there of him rocking this guitar as well. Got some breakdown stuff on there as well. So I'm going to roll that for you guys. And um, and then I'm going to see you in the next video now. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your support. Huge welcome to everybody who's new. Thanks for listening to me ramble on today about uh, the, uh, the good time that I had, I guess. And um, yeah, uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, cheeky comment. Let me know what your last gig was. Who you're looking forward to see. Have you been to see Bring Me on this tour? Let me know. Have you enjoyed it? Did you not enjoy it? Let me know. And um, yeah, and if you're new, please consider subscribing as well. I guess that's the last thing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, take care, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>